Okay, now we've, we've worked the saturation pretty successfully here. Now I want to really enhance the contrast of the image. And to do that, we're going to again take advantage of the differences in the individual channels. Again, looking here, we see in the red channel, um, the sky is much darker than it is in either the green channel or the blue channel. So what I'd really want to do is to enhance this weak sky uh, is I'm going to take advantage of those differences and use a new adjustment layer type. I'm going to go down here to our adjustment layer and select channel mixer. So now I have the channel mixer panel up and what I want to do is apply the red channel luminosity to the color image. So I'm going to start off by making a black and white version of this using the black and white presets here. We'll select the red filter preset. And now we have a black and white version of the image that is primarily the red channel. You can see here we've gotten the sky a lot darker and the trick here is we're going to change the apply mode. If you look down in our layers panel here, um, we're going to change the apply mode from normal to luminosity. So instead of using the gray color of this channel, we're going to use the value structure of, of this channel mixer adjustment on top of the color image. Now, I, I pretty much wrecked this foreground, but I'm right now I'm only looking at the sky, and we'll take care of the foreground in a minute. So our sky now represents the luminosity of the red channel. In the channel mixer, we can also subtract a little bit of the blue to make the blue darker. So if I move this and subtract 30 in the blue channel, I have to add it back, and I'm going to add it back here in the red channel. I'll add back 30. And let me just get, if I click in this, in the, uh, the, the value field here, use the arrow keys, I can nudge it one uh, tick at a time here. So anything that I subtract in the blue channel, if I add it back in the red channel, it won't change the brightness level of the white point. But I am subtracting brightness in the blue colors here. So now I've made my sky even more uh, dramatic. You can see if I toggle this layer on and off, here's my channel mixer adjustment layer, toggle that off and see how dramatic the sky has become. Um, but the foreground is all messed up. So again, the solution to this is our friend the blending options. And I'll show you another way of getting to the blending options dialog is to Double click in the uh, in the area here to the right of the thumbnails in this channel. If I double click on that, I get the blending options dialog up again. And here, what I want to do is remove the effect of this luminosity layer everywhere except the blue sky. So the blue sky is really bright in the blue channel, and everything else is dark. So let's go to the blue channel because this will allow us to blend through everywhere that blue is dark. And you can see I can pretty much eliminate everything in the foreground by sliding this black slider all the way over here. And uh, let's hold down Option or Alt and split that triangle apart just a little bit to feather the transition. But uh, now I've pretty much eliminated the effect of this luminosity blend here everywhere except the blue sky. Now we're going to work on the foreground. And for that, I'm going to have to isolate the, the foreground from the sky. And as it turns out, I already have a good selection here, uh, a selection source in the layer mask for my solid color gray layer. So if you hold down the uh, command or control key and click, I can load this layer mask as a selection. Now I actually want to select the foreground and not the sky. So I'm going to go up here to the select menu 
and choose inverse. And now I am selecting the foreground area, not the sky. And I'm going to make another channel mixer adjustment layer. Pick channel mixer. And again, I'm going to take advantage of the value structure of the different channels here. So start again by making a black and white. And this time I'm going to choose the green channel. So here I'm using uh, the, the black and white presets and selecting green. I've got 100% of the green channel making the image of black and white. It actually seems very dull. It's very, very gray. And all the differences are in the edge transitions and the, and the, the shapes in this, um, this image. So if I change my apply mode now from normal to overlay, suddenly have a lot of contrast here that's separating all the elements. It's a little dark though, so we're going to go back up to this channel mixer panel and brighten it up by adding more of the green channel brightness. And you can see that's going to bring the, the color of the grass up. And to remove some of the brightness from the violet flowers, I'm going to subtract some of the blue channel here. Now in this case instead of ending up at a uh, hundred percent which would be to keep the, the, the brightness level normal because I'm applying this in, in overlay mode and I, I'm just gonna really ramp up the green channel to increase the brightness of the green grass and uh, we've created a very dramatic effect here Look at all the separation in the, in the, in the, in the grass and the poppies. Uh, we've put some color back into the bright violet flowers here. And overall, we have a really much more dramatic looking image. So let's review. If we look at the, where we started, you can see that we had a, uh, we've affected a huge change here. This is where we started. And it really looks drab and lifeless compared to what we've done with it, all utilizing layer modes and blending options. So there, we haven't used any curves or color balance or levels or any of the traditional uh, color adjustment tools to affect a very dramatic uh, change in the image that would be impossible to use using these traditional techniques. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, we have managed to uh, learn about advanced blending options, layer apply modes, LAB color, and we've used color overlay and luminosity adjustment layers to uh, really improve the appearance of the image. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, I have more tutorials available on my website, ferris.com and with downloadable PDF tutorials that you can find at this following URL. You also might be interested in my book, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies, available from Cybex. Um, I also have a DVD, Beyond Skin, Going Deeper with Photoshop CS. Um, today we've been using CS4. This, this uh, DVD tutorial was filmed using CS3, but most of the techniques that I talk about work going back to Photoshop 7. So to review, you can also find me on lynda.com. Um, you can search for my book on amazon.com. The DVDs are available from acmeeducation.com, and my tutorials are also available in PDF form from veris.com. Thank you for watching.